you've been walking for miles. Step after step across vast, never-ending landscapes. And struggled over treacherous, mountainous terrain where one slip would mean certain death. And all to take the photograph that you've always dreamed of. But when you arrive, there's lots of people and distractions. Not a problem though, because in this video, I'm gonna show you a super quick and easy way that you can get rid of it all using Photoshop. Alright, so in last week's video when I showed you how to remove noise from your pictures using a smart object and the median stack mode, a few of you said in the comments that you used the same technique for making things and people disappear. Now from all the comments that came in, it was obvious that not everyone knows that technique, so that's what we're going to cover in this video. So here's a scene in a town near to where I live with a bridge spanning across an estuary. The bridge has stopped go lights on either side and carries both pedestrians and vehicles, with them all moving at different speeds and sometimes remaining still for a short while. Now, if I wanted to take a picture of this scene and for there to be no people or vehicles, I could take the picture and then in Photoshop use something like the clone stamp tool, but that could take a long time and depending on whereabouts in the picture I'm working, it could be really challenging. Or I could take a number of photographs and use the median setting just like I did in the noise removal technique. Now how many pictures you take is entirely down to you, but you do need to make sure that you leave a few seconds between each of them to allow enough time for the people and the vehicles to have moved from their original position. In this example, I think I took a photograph every 10 seconds or so. To take the pictures and avoid movement in the camera, you'll get far better results if you use a tripod and maybe a cable release, or the camera's intervalometer and just tell it how many pictures you want and the time in between each and just let it do it all for you. Now once I've shown you how to do this technique, I'm going to show you just a few ways that you can do it even quicker. But for now, you can see that in Photoshop, I've got every single image that I took open and you can see that by all the individual tabs at the top of the screen. And if I zoom in and then go to the window menu, arrange and match zoom, all of the other images now will be zoomed to the same amount. So you can clearly see that each of the images contain both vehicles and cars, but in different places because I gave them time to move in between each photograph being taken. Now, if you remember from the last video, the first part of the technique is where I need to create a document with each of these images, one on top of the other in the layer stack. And because all of the images are already open in Photoshop, the quickest way that I can do that is by going to the file menu, choosing scripts, and then load files into stack. In this dialog box here, because the images are already open, I can click on the add open files button, and that puts them all in this section here. Underneath that, we can align them by putting a tick in the checkbox or also creating a smart object. Now I know that when I took this, there was no breeze in the air whatsoever. So I know that they're going to be perfectly aligned. So I'm not going to put a tick in them at this particular moment. What I will do though is just click OK. Now once Photoshop has finished processing that, you'll see now we have a new document with all of the images one on top of the other in the layer stack. The next thing I need to do is with the uppermost layer highlighted, I'll drag down right to the bottom where the very first image is, hold down the shift key and click on it. That'll then highlight all of the images there in the layer stack. I'll then create a smart object by going to the fly out menu in the top right hand corner of the layer stack and choosing convert to smart object. Now once we have that smart object, if we zoom in on the image here, we can see that nothing has changed. That's because we need to now do what would be the final step and use that median in the stack mode. So I'm going to go to the layer menu, smart objects, stack mode, and then median. Now when I do that, keep an eye on the vehicles and the people that you can see walking across and driving across the bridge. So we click on median and let Photoshop do its processing. And then bam, it's done. 
just amazing how it makes the people and the cars all disappear so there is absolutely nothing traveling across the bridge just incredible now if you didn't have the sky or any water in your image this would be it it'd be perfect it's absolutely finished but if i just zoom out you can see here that the sky has also been affected it's gone from being kind of cloudy to now being smooth and that's also happened to the water so what I'll now do in this case, let's just zoom out a little bit more, is I'm going to go and grab one of the images that are still open at the top of the screen. We'll grab this one here. I'll use my move tool, click down and drag on top of the tab that contains a smart object median image. I'll then bring the cursor inside on top of that image and hold down the shift key and then let go so that it puts it directly on top. Now you can see when I do that, the people have all returned. However, all we need to do is just add a layer mask to this uppermost layer. I'm gonna get a brush, a normal round soft brush. Let's just check up in here that we've got 0% hardness and a black foreground color so that now all I need to do is to hide the contents of this layer to reveal the results of the layer below, which is where we use the median and the people and the cars will just disappear. So now you know the steps involved, let me take a few moments to show you a few ways that you can reduce the steps so that you can get this done even quicker. If you use Lightroom, one quick way to send all the images into Photoshop and be one on top of the other in the layer stack is to highlight them all by holding down the Command key on Mac or Control key in Windows and pressing A, then go into the Photo menu, Edit In, open as layers in Photoshop. If you use Bridge, you can do exactly the same by highlighting all of the images, going to the Tools menu, Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers. In Photoshop, rather than opening all the images up, when you have the welcome screen, press Escape to go to the main Photoshop workspace, then go to the File menu, choose Scripts, and load files into Stack. You can then navigate to individual files or a folder of images. Even quicker than that though, you can go to the File menu, choose Scripts and Statistics. At the top here, we can choose the Median Stack mode. We can navigate to a folder of images, open those images up so that they appear in this section, and then also automatically align them, and then click OK. Now, just like before, the people and the vehicles have now gone, but because this image contains both sky and water, we need to fix that by adding an original image on top. So I'll go to the File menu, choose Place Embedded, choose one of the original images, click on Place, that will put it directly on top. I'll press Enter or Return to commit it. Now, because we automatically aligned all the images, I'm also going to need to align this image that I've placed directly on top. So in the layer stack, I will highlight both the images, go to the edit menu and choose auto align layers. But you'll see here it's grayed out. And that's because we can't align smart object layers. So I need to rasterize these to make them normal layers. I'll go to the layer menu, choose rasterize all layers. And you can see now it turns them into normal layers. I can then go to the edit menu, auto align layers, Leave it in auto and click OK. And then all I need to do is to add a layer mask to that uppermost layer, get a soft black brush, and then just paint the people and vehicles away. So there you go, Median, incredible technology in Photoshop, but it doesn't stop there. There's so much more you can do with it, but I'm gonna leave that for another video. In the meantime though, it'd be great if you could support this channel for free by giving the video a thumbs up and also clicking on that subscribe button. But for now, that's me, I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.